All right, let's uh, keep working on that navigation bar that we worked on in the previous video. I've done some things to uh, test out the navigation bar effect, make sure that I have what I wanted to have before I started this video. But uh, as you can see, what we have right here is some color changing icons. And um, yeah, we're gonna clean this all up, but I'm gonna show you what I did and add some other stuff so that you guys can follow along. Before we get started, if this video helps you out, return the favor by leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing to the channel. If you want to use this sprite sheet and get other Unity assets, become a member at infogamerhub.com. We need you and we thank you for any help you can provide. We have a sprite sheet video where I showed you how to create this template of different uh, sprite sheets. Um, I didn't actually show you how to create the sprites, but right now um, I'm doing some grayscale coloring to uh, when you change the colors in Unity, um, these darker grays will be a darker color and the lighter grays will be a lighter color to provide different contrasts with the exact same color. I showed how to set up the lines and canvas size and all that stuff to uh, be easy to import into Unity. In that video to that, the link is in the description. Um, but let's go ahead back to Unity. This is uh, what I've um, going to be pulling in to Unity. And you just go to Assets, Import, New Asset, and then you go find that asset. You can, I think you can also drag and click the image file in, but I'm using a PNG um, to make sure that the, um, you know, the parts around the image aren't white because I, I, I want it to be see-through there. Okay, let's go to our sprite, and you'll have to change some settings when you import it in by going to here, changing to Sprite 2D UI, and then changing to Multiple if you have multiple sprites in your sprite sheet. And because in the template that I did on Photoshop, I set the uh, pixels to 100 units, this should play nicely if we just leave it to 100. Then let's click on the Sprite Editor. A, a thing that I showed in the previous video is if you do it automatically, it grabs each one of these letters, and we don't like that. That's why I had to set up that uh, sprite sheet in Photoshop, make sure that the grids were um, well, that I could copy the grid cell size and get it um, into Unity easier. And because the grid cell size is 100, we got to change that to 100 in the X and 100 in the Y and change the padding to 4 because we had the gutters in the Photoshop uh, sprite sheet to be set to 4 pixels. Then we slice it and hit apply. That gives us these images we have here, these icons and buttons. Um, and then let's go ahead and show you how to edit one of these buttons. If we go to, let's click on this uh, button 6. Let's right click on the button, go to UI um, image, and then let's uh, find the right icon that we want, uh, this question mark one. Uh, it's number four. Click on the image, drag in number four to the sprite sheet. Now it is a little bit bigger than our buttons, so we can trim that down to 50. We can also get rid of the text. All right, we can just uh, delete this other text object if we don't want it. Um, we already got the secret in there, the secret text that came in with the sprite. And then this button um, comes with its own image. So if in order, you know, if we want to clean this up and get rid of that, uh, we can just go ahead, click on this and go to uh, none. We can also change the, uh, because it comes with the default color, and I think that it actually will put a background white in there. So if you click on this, drag it all down to, see, you can see the change, that there's actually a color there. You can change the opacity to zero to make it invisible. Okay, and then when we go, when, when the button's selected, you can see that there's this target graphic and it is already it's set on the button image already and uh, we want it to be set on our um, question mark and so you do that by clicking once on this dragging it over to 
the inspector and dragging it into the target image. Then uh, the selected, you know, there's a couple different options. You can do a highlighted color, and we can test all this stuff, uh, change it to yellow, um, change normal color. That's like if you just want the basic color to be a different one um, to red. Pressed color is a very short, but I'm just showing you all of what these different ones do. Um, the selected color. Okay, if we hit play, see, as soon as my mouse goes over it, it changes colors. If I click it, it changes to blue. And let's change all these back. Oh, actually, we can just hit play. We're going to have to hit play. Change all these back and just leave this. Uh, can leave this one to blue. Press color. Just leave it a white. Okay, let's do the same with this time button. It's on the second one. Um, you got to make sure all of these are, you know, the same, similar um, setup. You know, you don't want to have some um, be highlighted when you press and some not be. So just change them all to the same setting. Okay, let's clean up some of these other buttons to just repeat the process. Um, let's go to button two, which is our timer and you can remove this text it's got nothing in it um, the clock okay it looks good it's already got the clock sprite sheet in there um, the button let's remove the UI sprite like we did in the other one go to none change the opacity to zero alright let's go to our first button and clean that one up the text still has something in it. We can remove the text. Uh, we Let's change this name because instead of bars, it's called charts on the uh, menu. So let's just call it chart image. And let's change this clock to clock image. This is just letting us know that this is actually the image game object. Okay. Um, in order, So as you can see, the button, when the button image is the one in there that's the thing that's actually changing the color um, and so it's just a different effect if you want the out outline or not another really cool thing that the with the grayscale is that it's the exact it's the same color this red color is the same color but because the sprite has um, some grays in it it makes it a darker red Okay, back to cleaning up the first button. Um, let's remove that UI sprite to none and going down to uh, zero, um, the zero in the opacity. We could also just see what it happens if we remove this component. Uh, you must have a graphic target in order to use a color. Okay, so that's easy. With our graphic tar target is this chart image. And let's see if that uh, messed anything up. Nope. Well, um, one, one last thing we we're going to do before we test this on my phone is let's uh, put in a little bar. So let's go right click on canvas UI image again. And let's name this uh, line or navigation line line image. Okay, let's drag in whichever one our line was. It's uh, number seven. Drag it into our sprite. All right, if we drag out the width, we can drag it out pretty far, change the position, and we can even change the height a little bit, make this uh, skinnier. Okay, so that line, that that line's pretty customizable. You can, uh, if I go back to the sprite editor, you can see that line was actually in the square as well. It fit in the square and we were able to stretch it out. It's, um, and it looks pretty good. You can trim it down to what you want. Um, one thing that I noticed with these panels is because we have a um, sprite in there, it actually puts this line in there. And you can see it when we test it out on mobile. Um, it's something to be aware of when you're trying to make stuff really clean. And then also making sure you have your panel lines uh, all set equal to the same. So when you're switching panels, it doesn't uh, change the background. 
Uh, one thing you have to be wary of, since we remove the sprite, if we um, change the opacity to zero, anything in our panel menu, like if we have a scroll down, it's going to show up um, through these, like behind these buttons. And so you might really, you might want to leave this on white and just make sure that uh, you have it matched up with the line, the top of the sprite. Like, let's change this color to green really quick, or red. Um, so the top of that is right there. We can change, can try to change the position. No, I kind of like it right there. But, you know, you can drag this gray bar down so it actually fits on the line. Navigation line image. Let's just click and drag it down to the very, you know, tip of that line. And then change our navigation panel background back to white. Okay, I'm going to build this to my phone. Um, as you can see, it lines up pretty nicely on the phone. It's good to test with different screen sizes, um, but also to test with the phone to make sure the buttons are working, making sure it's looking clean. Um, because, you know, when you zoom in on this uh, screen, it's not very clear. It looks all pixelated, but that's not how it looks like in the phone when you actually have it on the phone. So um, it just gives you a better representation on how crisp the icons are actually going to look. That's why I like always um, testing my progress um, on a phone. Awesome, I think this menu is really cleaning up nicely. Um, again, if this was helpful to you, please help us in return by leaving a like and a comment on this video. Also, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. All right. Let's check out what's on this uh, secret button page. I might have put something secret in there. Let's click it. And it's a subscribe! <laughs> Come on, do it. Just subscribe already. Let's be friends. All right, well, let's see. You guys are awesome. We'll see you in an upcoming video. Talk to you later. Bye.